Hey, what's going on guys? Matt back here with another tutorial and today we're going to be doing a request that includes blood cubes and having a counter of the number of humans in the scene. So because we've already made this scene, there's a few things we need to kind of tweak. First, Firstly, I, we need to add a layer for the floor. So if you just go over here and go add layer, we've got floor. I've also added a blood layer and this is for the blood cubes when we make them. And once we've done that, you need to go into edit and project settings and then go down to physics. And then we're just going to untick blood from colliding with anything. Basically, this is the collision matrix. And what this will do is stop it from colliding with any layer, except on this one, it will also collide with the floor. So all we want it to do is hit the floor because we don't want to be knocking it around with cars and stuff because that's going to cause a whole load of calculations. You could leave it on if you wanted to for other things. Um, the only thing is, is obviously humans and stuff are going to be dragging them around and uh, causing loads of calculations for the computer. So I thought I'd turn them off, but you could leave them on if you want to. So what I've actually added into the game is a blood cube object. And basically I've just added the texture from the blood splat but you could give it a red texture or whatever texture you wanted what i've got on that is just a rigid body that is using gravity and everything's turned on it's got the layer of blood make sure you set that and it's also then got a blood cube script that i've created so if i go into into the blood cube script what we've got is just on on the start function everything is on the start function all it's going to do is once it's created it's going to just uh, transform rotate and then it's going to do that on a vector 3 with the x being from random range 0 to 60, the y being from random range 0 to 60, and then the z doesn't need to be anything because it would have kind of teetered on an axis. And then we need to just go uh, game get, get component dot rigid body, and then just add a force of transform up multiplied by just a random range I've done between three, minus 300 and 300, but you can do whatever you want here. This is basically to make it kind of pop when it um, when it's created so it's kind of like it's splatting out of stuff and then i've just added a yield wait for seconds and then just done 15 seconds and then destroyed the game object just so it's not there's not loads of cubes everywhere because the game wouldn't be able to handle that so that's pretty much it for that I, i've also added uh, a couple of bits inside the human and zombie scripts just make sure when you do create these that you drag the blood cube prefab that you make into the blood cube variable that we've got inside the script so if i go into the uh, human movement and the zombie movement i've got them open in here if i go into the human movement we've got uh, i've i've tagged everything with with new um, just as commented out um, just so you know where they are inside the project so i've got a variable of blood cube which is of type game object so we drag that in later on and then down here i've just basically created f four of them this is for the human so it's when the human is hit by a car uh, it just adds a bunch of little cubes and then uh, on the zombie one it's exactly the same at the top so we've got a blood cube uh, variable of game object and then we've just we just add them wherever basically where a blood splat would be created or where something is killed so um, this one's when we run into a human we're going to create a bunch of them uh, but this one we create them on the other object transform so we're creating them on the human so the human kind of splats out some blood when we bite them and then down here we've also got when we get killed we instantiate blood cubes on ourselves. And all that does, um, I've got the uh, counter turned on as well, actually, at the moment. But if I attack one of these guys, it just kind of splats out some cubes and then they'll just they'll disappear after a while. So there's some randomness with cube creation and stuff like that. So that's pretty much it for the blood cubes. And then moving on to the human counter. So if we go into, I'll get rid of those. If we go into our, this is on, on the human data scripts that we had before, which is attached to the path triggers in here what i've done is every everything's inside there what i've done is uh added a human count integer which starts off at zero i've got a buildings game object array and then inside the start function uh we've got buildings equals game object dot find game objects with tag building so basically we find all the things with the, with the tag of building which we had already tagged before and then uh, we store them all because they're never going to change so we just need them to be stored once and then we can access them later on uh, and then inside update Every time the update is called, we're going to change the human count to zero, and then, which is basically a temporary way of making it so we can count the number of humans. So we set it to zero to start with, and then we do a for loop, i equals zero, and then when i is less than buildings dot length, so the length of the amount of buildings, we're, we're going to iterate through all the buildings, and uh, for every building that we find, we're going to do, we're going to add the current number of humans that are inside that building to our human count. 
And then once we've added all of the buildings humans, we're going to add the humans from inside the scene. So we've already got that inside our human data script, which we're in. So we're going to go uh, for every... The, the reason why we have to do a for loop through here is because sometimes the humans are missing when they get deleted because of the way that we had it. So we had a nice tidy list when we were doing this bit. So we're going to do for, and then you have to do J because I um, is already taken and it comes up with an error. So I've just done J just because it's after I. Um, so we've got uh, through, we go to iterate through the humans dot count minus one because arrays and stuff start zero rather than one. And we're going to go if humans J doesn't equal null. So basically if it's not one of those missing ones, human count is going to go up by one. And then on GUI, we're going to have just, I've just got a box there with a label inside it. That's just uh, humans remaining plus human count. So if I go into the game again, you can see the number of humans rem remaining at the top is 626. Now, sometimes that's going to go down when they go off the screen like that. So it's not a problem. And also if they get hit by a car, which is kind of a rare anomaly. Every time they're going to get, they're going to get eaten, that's going to count down the number of humans in the scene until it gets to zero, basically. And then you finish the game. So I hope that's useful. I hope that's answered the questions that were asked. Uh, if you guys have any more questions about the game, I won't add them to this project. I'll add them to the GUI and the menus version of the tutorials, uh, just so everything's nice and tidy rather than kind of adding everybody's stuff in all at once. So if you do have any more qu any questions or requests, then please leave them in the comments down below. And um, I'll see you next time.